Hello. Yes, I know. It's been a minute. Why is that, you ask, uh, Leon? Who knows? Maybe no one will ever know. But I want you for a second to forget about all that and direct your attention to this here. <laughs> yeah, you know, a lot has happened since the last time we did an episode of Brainworms. But that's the beauty of this life is there is just no shortage of absolute madness like this teacher doing what looks like some sort of uh, Native American rain dance or something in the middle of a trigonometry class nonetheless. So we're going to touch on that briefly and look at a couple other things that might make us angry or uh, bring a tear to our eye or make us laugh. Uh, who knows? And I'm, I'm, I appreciate you being here uh, for the journey. That's right, the world keeps spinning and people continue to be horrible on camera, in public. Uh, here we have the classic, uh, you know, Instagram, TikTok, how to get back or dump a cheater. This is just, we'll get into this in a second, but this is just a, another glaring indication into what type of person this woman is. We're going to ruin my man's car. Looks like a Range Rover. Uh, there you go. Just makes for a great viral video, right? All the women in the comments who've been slighted ever by a man saying, yes, queen. Yes, queen, yes, queen, yes, queen. Got him, queen. Let's start off with the first thing that's the most important. Glitter is the worst thing on the entire planet. All right, it's beautiful. It looks cool. Um, kids seem to love it, but it gets on everything. It's impossible to get off, and you'll find it seven months later in a crevasse that you didn't know existed on your body. Like many trends on the internet, in my opinion, this trend of using the end of a relationship or catching your significant other cheating as some sort of uh, clout token is a way to create a viral video because it's relatable and you can rile people up uh, is pathetic and stupid. Not only are you recording yourself vandalizing a very expensive car, which can probably be used against you if this ever got litigated, you're also telling the world, I care much more about a couple of measly likes on the internet than taking care of my own house, my own home, my own relationship, my own life. I don't think there's really any winners in this case, quite frankly. In fact, I don't condone cheating, but assuming he actually did, uh, he might actually be carrying the W in this case because he now lost a girlfriend who cares more about, you know, making a TikTok video during the ending of their relationship than actually trying to mend it or just ending it rationally. The classic psychotic hot girl meme. JLo says men under the age of 33 are really useless. To which Anon replies, by all means, let's give a damn about relationship advice from a woman that collects engagement rings like she's Thanos. <laughs> Boom! Roasted! You gotta love it. Although he's not wrong, right? JLo does get a pass. She can say whatever she wants because she is single-handedly the hottest woman over the age of 50. Changed my mind. This is just wrong. I'm 35 and I'm also completely useless <laughs> as a 36 year old. Uh, a little bit too relatable, too close to home there, y'all. <laughs> you know what's not useless though? Sleek, affordable earbuds like those from today's video sponsor, Raycon. Let's have a peek. It's officially holiday season, baby. <laughs> so instead of those lame ass wool socks you've gotten your father every year for the last decade, why don't you step up his wireless earbud game with a fresh pair of Raycons? Pow. You guys know I've been loving my Raycons for years now. They're the perfect companion for workouts, listening to podcasts, and making hands-free calls while you're knitting Nana that new Christmas sweater because the one she actually wants is a little out of your price range. Great news, Raycon wireless earbuds are half the price of other premium audio brands, but they sound just as good. You get eight hours of playtime, 32 hours of battery life, and the built-in mic allows you to take calls at the touch of a button. Yeah, go ahead and transfer that eight billion to my offshore account, please. I don't read books anymore, if I'm being honest with you. Social media has destroyed my ability to focus, but I am an avid audiobook listener, and my Raycons make it easy and convenient to listen no matter where I am or what I'm doing. Whether I'm lying on the couch, doing yard work, or working out, the optimized gel tips come in all different sizes to create the best listening experience. They come with a 45-day free return happiness guarantee, so it's the perfect time to get yourself a pair and or that person in your life you actually care about. You can still get the wool for your annoying in-laws if you want. So click the link in the description box below or go to buyraycon.com slash leonlush to unlock exclusive deals for up to 20% off your Raycon order. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel and thank you Raycon for supporting YouTubers that we love. I appreciate you and happy holidays. Welcome to Paranoware, where we provide parents with information they can use <laughs> to keep their kids safe. Oh, God. I'm Sergeant Brian Gunsley with the Orange County Sheriff's Whose Department. Whose idea was this? And today I'm going to show you how to search your child's room. The first step is to remove the child, or the teenager in this case, uh, from the room. <laughs> what? The? First of all, I need to look into this more because apparently this is called Parent Aware, and this, I don't know if this was put together as a PSA or by the actual uh, the Sheriff's Department to help 
parents learn to police their children in their own home by doing a strip search of their entire room. Let's see what the Sergeant Brian Gunzely has to say here. Their protests may distract you from doing a thorough That's search. right. No, you got to get hey, the pal, kid out of there. You, you to leave the room. If they refuse to get out of there, you then slap them in the teeth and you throw them out the second story window, in which case you can then search the room uh, while they're nursing their broken leg on the ground below you. Thanks. We'll talk later. <laughs> hey, pal. <laughs> that dude's like 30 years old. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Episode one. It's important to search your child's room every once in a while. Like I would say about every six months, unless you suspect that they're using drugs or alcohol, then you're gonna wanna do it more often. Then you can save on your own drug and alcohol bill by taking some of your child's while they're at school. This helps plan for the future as you get to save a little bit money that you can use on groceries each week as inflation needs into the buying power of the US dollar. The way I would search this room is to split it into sections. So this would be my first section to do. And then another this is, a, this is insane. Hold on. And then left to right. So Yo, here, no stone unturned, right? Searching in <laughs> plants and then go across to the right. Imagine like treating your child like a criminal and like booting them out of the room and strip searching it like they're, you know, uh, under indictment by the FBI or something. This is insanity. To whatever um, containers that are here. Oh, we got, a, we we got a container. Containers and inspect things thoroughly. See, here we have a container with, looks like a place for someone to hide something. Hey man, I put my weed in there, man. <laughs> Certainly wanna talk about that. We'll put that bit. on the search later side and of then the bed. Just kinda look through everything. Um, look in the coffee the book, mug. You just wanna search through all the pages and just see if you see anything. Search through every page of a book? Search through, bro, I got a bookcase of like 60 books over there. You want my mom and dad to come through and search 275,000 book pages? What possibly might you find in there? Here we have a picture, it looks like, of a child with a gun to their head. <laughs> um, this may indicate that um, they're thinking about committing suicide. Stop, 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 stop. <laughs> Was that, a, was that a stick figure drawing on note paper of a stick figure holding a gun to its head? <laughs> Man, this is, this is better than I thought it was going to be. You know what? I'm not even mad about this anymore. That is good advice. You know what? Look out for the, look out for the stick figures in your son's books. You never know what they might mean. So that's something that we want to talk about with our child. Mm, okay. Oh, here we have something. Uh, this looks like a scale. Oh, a scale disguised as a so video game. Used. Um, by someone who's maybe purchasing drugs or selling drugs. Oh my god, is that like an old dual CD P PlayStation original jewel case with a scale inside? If I do, listen, if my son had that, I wouldn't even be mad. I'd dap him up. That is a sick, that is a sick disguise. Also, that makes me wonder how old this is because PlayStation 1. I don't have time now, but I'd like to dive into this whole parent aware uh, program to see what other gems they have. But for now, let's keep going. So let's remove the. The, the sheets and all the bedding and just take a look at the mattress make sure the mattress doesn't have any openings in it and then you want to search underneath and we have a Budweiser found no it. a Budweiser it is is a pipe nice we got a highlighter with a pipe inside bro he has got every sort of highlighter uh, incognito paraphernalia you can imagine in this room a PlayStation game so scale when you're searching, the highlighter pipe you want to Definitely go through everything. Surprised he had a normal Budweiser bottle under the bed. You'd think it would be in like a high C container or something. Slacking. And Anyways, let's see what the closing case, message is here. You know, your child has something like this. Whoa, is that a monster energy drink? Now my kid's in trouble. <laughs> you know, if I find if I find a monster energy in my boy's room, that's when he's he's getting the belt. Everything else, I mean, just just learning experience. <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. Relax. You're gonna want to find it. It's very important to conduct a safety search like this because you want to know whether or not they're using drugs. Best way to prevent adult addiction is to intervene early. Best way to ruin a relationship with your child is to never build any sort of foundation of trust and just strip search their room randomly at your own will in leisure. Thanks for watching Parent Aware. Jesus, I have uh, so many mixed feelings about that video. Knee jerk reaction is, listen, maybe that's a little aggressive. I, I'm all for being involved in your child's life, but this doesn't, I, like that's what they do in jail. That's what like parole officers do 
to inmates. Is that the type of relationship you want to have with your kid? Maybe it, maybe it is for some people. That just seems a little fucking weird. Wow, I've done so many of these shakedowns in my lifetime when I worked at a prison. <laughs> there you go. I would never do that to my kids. There's a difference between being a responsible parent and being insane, narcissistic, and controlling. Uh, I tend to agree. The main takeaway is that you can turn a beautiful vintage PlayStation 1 dual CD jewel case into a working gram scale uh, to measure drugs, so that's 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 important. All right, let's get back to the Sokotoa lady we saw at the beginning who uh, caused quite a bit of controversy on Twitter, I saw briefly several weeks ago. I mean, just going absolutely apeshit. Takes a certain level of balls. Aside from any sort of like cultural appropriation or any sort of racial implication that might be offensive, just to make yourself look this foolish takes a, a certain level of balls, so I'll give her that. Again, I ask you, please tell me the secret of being champ. Please. And then I hear. <laughs> so she said, obviously, this is ridiculous at the end of it. So she knew what she was doing was ridiculous. Probably didn't have the presence of mind to think that in today's landscape, today's climate, maybe putting on a headdress and doing some sort of Indian dance slash chant was not the uh, wisest decision if you value your job. I know some teachers have tenure. Maybe she thought she was immune. She certainly was not. I'm quite sure she got fired after this. <laughs> when I initially saw this, I had no clue what was going on. I, imagined, I thought she was like in some sort of history class and she's like teaching about Native Americans, blah, blah, blah. Turns out this is a trigonometry class, which had me even more perplexed. What in the good hell is this performance doing in a trigonometry class? I asked myself, and thank God, Reddit commenters know a lot more about trigonometry and just things in general than I do. There's a lot of smooth brains on Reddit, but there's some occasional intelligent ones that come through with some good answers, uh, and we got that here. Now, let me preface this by saying what she did is effed up and wrong and shouldn't have done that. All right, sure. She was teaching SOKOTOA, an acronym for finding the three basic functions in trigonometry. SO stands for the sine of an angle, Ka stands for cos of an angle. TOA stands for the tangent of an angle. Uh, I hope this at least clarifies. I suspect the teacher's idea was if I make a good spectacle and show, the students will remember the material better. Makes a lot more sense now. Acronyms to learn simple, you know, order of operations. These little adages, you know, to remember things that might be harder to remember, but when you tie them to something that's funny or makes sense, it's a lot easier to remember. For example, when I was learning guitar, the order of the strings on a guitar are E-A-D-G-B-A. And the way I remembered that is my guitar teacher told me, Eddie ate dynamite, goodbye Eddie. Right? E-A-D, Eddie ate dynamite, goodbye Eddie, G-B-A. And that's how I wrote it. I never forgot that. That was like fucking 20 years ago. And that type of stuff stocks with me. So there is an element to this that these kids now, if trigonometry is truly their passion, this woman set them up for a life of success because they will never again forget Sokotoa. <laughs> There's another side to this where maybe, maybe this woman was a little bit insane and was being a bit racially insensitive. Uh, Perhaps. I just think it's kind of funny and batshit crazy, but if I was a Native American person, surely maybe I would feel differently, right? The punchline to me is this woman is absolutely insane for thinking this was an acceptable way to do this in today's climate, right? Even if she, I don't think she was purposely trying to be offensive, obviously, she's trying to teach these kids about trigonometry, but she has to know that by today's standards, uh, you're not allowed to do this stuff anymore, and if you value your job, you don't do it. Uh, she found out the hard way. Rest in peace. A brain worries. Well, to be fair, they definitely will remember this. Uh, mission accomplished. Video aside, she's going to find out just how good their memory is. This is one of those things she should have ran by someone who could have said the only logical thing. No, you're out of your mind, and I'm going to pretend you never said that. <laughs> like, where does the cultural appropriation thing end, right? This is the issue I've always had with it. Nobody thinks about fucking intent or malicious intent or, you know, what... Some of it, a lot of it, that people get outraged about on Twitter is just other cultures doing things to celebrate cultures that aren't their own, right? Like, where does where do we draw the line when we're cooking at home? We have taco night in my household. I fucking love tacos. My son loves tacos. My wife loves tacos. We love making them. It's delicious. Is that going to be a problem eventually because we're appropriating another culture, their food? I, I mean, it just seems insane to me. Like, as long as you're doing things with the right intentions, it just seems like another thing for people to get pissed about on fucking... Twitter for no reason. This is a little this is a little bit more of a gray area. Well, because I don't know, you saw the video. The title though is that uh, you know, teacher gets recorded by Native American student because he felt that violence was being committed against him and he had the right to record. I mean, it's one thing to be offended, but I don't I don't violence <laughs> seems like a bit of a stretch. Anyways, 
the fuck do I know? Oh, here's a good one. TikTok refused to put on a shirt and then comes back with other douchebags the next day to harass employees who call oh, him out. Yeah. What happened? You gotta have the shirt on, you gotta go. Oh, damn, for real? Like, so decide right now. On or out? Whoa, what's, what's the deal? On? No, I'm just saying, like, out. what's that? What's what? Uh, like, the dance moves you do. I don't know the who this guy is previous to this video, Wait, but happened? looks like he has a cameraman. Probably your typical online social media grifter that just likes to stir shit up uh, for views, and we have all know that's a very lucrative business these days. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see how she asked was, like, polite. So he like, goes into Best Buy without in a shirt. Like, trying to, like, hit the Charlie D'Amelio woe on me. It's all good, Andrew. I can put it on. He, like, looked the other way. It's kind of, like, sus. Unless you roll that way. Yeah. You roll that way? Yeah. Homosexual? Mm -hmm. Damn, you're not gonna die, man. What? Oh, God, I hate this dude already. I hate him so much. Uh, ah! Ah! I'm sorry. I don't even, like, I'm so sick and tired of describing why I hate people like this. I think it's fairly obvious. He's just... Fucking stand dudes like that, bro. You know what? I want to come in here with an army of people. Here you go. Shirts on. Fuck, man. I'm not gonna lie. Andrew pissed me just off. Just entitled hey, bro, rat cunts. Hey, man, you gotta put on the shirt real quick. Offering okay. nothing except disruption and inconvenience for people for the sake of clout on the internet. Likes, views, whatever the fuck it is. Just useless members of society. Oh, so here we you go. You did not like me take off my shirt. Boys, uncircumcised. <laughs> So this dude clearly has a legion of followers and he was able to rally up a bunch of other moronic meatheads uh, to go into a Best Buy and take their shirt off for the internet, for, for to make, for the clout. You would spend $69 for P90X to wear a fucking shirt unless it's from shopjadeon.com. Ah, includes a merch plug at the end. I mean, this is just the pinnacle of egocentricism in our online culture today. Fuck this dude. Fuck him and everyone like him, quite frankly. The Hardy and Jason Aldean Here we concert. go. <laughs> well, that sounds fun. I mean, I don't know who those people are, but that sounds great. All right, so this is a TikTok of a woman stitching herself as a response to a TikTok from these country bumpkins here that are giving us a story about something that happened at a Jason Aldean concert. $150 per ticket and paid $500 for a suite. Woo! Spending some money. It sounds great. Have a wonderful time. Already, run. this woman is we annoying the fuck out of me. Of course, it's about vaccinations. Forty dollars a piece for. Oh, fantastic! That sounds wonderful. You know, you gotta have safety protocols in place. Gotta keep the community safe. Uh, I love it. I'm cringing out of my skin. For both parties involved. What do you mean involved. you don't agree with this? Of course, you agree with this. See, right here. Before you can even go to buy the tickets, you get the health check that's required where it very clearly states that, you know, you'll have a negative COVID test within 72 hours of the event or, you know, show a vaccine card or, you know, get a test there. And then we get it. We get it. Yes, you have to. I mean, it is interesting that you do have to <clears throat> physically hit the I agree button to get tickets and they're surprised when they got to the show. Seems a little bit insane. So is it that you don't remember or you don't think that it applies to because... <laughs> like white on rice, baby. You never, there's, there's just, there's never in all of the brain worms I've done, whether it's like with the mask shit, now the vaccine status stuff, you never see a video like this where they don't just throw in a, this is America, right? And however you feel, you just have to laugh at, at the consistency of the meme, at least. Ah, uh, there it is. Yes, this is America. This is a country where private companies can require certain things of their patrons. And that patron can either agree to those guidelines or not participate or patronize that business. Much like wearing a shirt or shoes in order to go to a restaurant, <sighs> you have to agree to those things or you cannot come in. Mm, okay, yeah, uh, counter argument. I'm not, uh, but shirt and shoes, uh, a little bit different than medical procedure, right? I'm not. I'm not saying pro or con. I'm just saying, like, it's a, it's a weird. It's it's. Yes, it makes sense. Purveyors of business can tell you not to come in, but it's weird to compare those two things specifically. More or less, all businesses do it. America. So was it that you just thought that it wouldn't apply to you because... America! Oh, sorry. She scared me. <laughs> Oof, like a little goblin. Yes. Jesus. This is America, where the rules apply to, yes, even you. And what is it that so many people often say, people a lot like you? 
are you getting the feeling like I don't care whether you agree or disagree. It's sure it's it's fun to dunk on like you know Southern bumpkins talking vaccine shit, but the woman making this video is just insufferable. Like, can I talk to your manager type at a restaurant? Like, she just oh my god, the vibes I'm getting are immaculately horrendous right now. Ah uh, yes, I remember. If you don't like it, you can leave. Oh my god, that felt so good. Ugh. Yeah, that was a tough, that was tough to watch. Brainworms on both sides. The people, the concert goers, brainworms, absolute idiots, obviously. Like, you knew what you are getting into, you had to click the button, like, you're a dumbass. America. This woman, though, she is like, the ending, her little, oh god, that felt so good. That perfectly illustrates, perfectly sums up 99% of the discourse on the internet. It has nothing to do with trying to educate, think critically, expanding our own line of thinking or learning. It is only about trying to dunk on someone or one-up somebody to selfishly get that feeling of righteousness to release a little bit of dopamine to make you feel something. The flip side to that is there are incredible places to learn on the internet, incredible resources. You can learn anything you want. There's so many, so many places to grow and learn from every single day. One that I've been using recently is a podcast by a guy named Dr. Andrew Huberman. Uh, he's a neuroscientist from Stanford and his podcast is unbelievable. Has totally challenged some of the things I've thought and, and, and taught me some things that are wonderful food for thought. And I suggest that's what we that's what we need to do is we need to stop just constantly brainlessly consuming all of this bullshit selfish one-up dunking and deliberately try and consume content that will help our brains actually grow instead of vapid shit that makes them eat away and turn into gray matter. Okay, boomerant over. I know this video probably fits into the 99% I was just talking about, but it's all about balance, baby. After you're done with this one, hopefully we had a little bit of laugh, go listen to a podcast that's going to teach you a thing or two. I don't, I don't fucking know. You figure it out for yourself. I'm not your goddamn dad. Shut up. Oh, I think I saw a bunch of memes about this the other day on Twitter. Hadn't seen the video yet. My man's... My <laughs> all right. I'm not political at all. You guys know me, but this shit is funny as hell. Look at the dude. Listen to the dude you talking. Can change forever the trajectory we are on. You can make Just droning on and on. Can you even blame the man? He's like a thousand years old. He's taking a quick siesta in the middle of uh, a global climate. I don't care what climate it is, dude. He's old. Old people sleep. Bro, my grandfather, my father, I've seen them grow. My grand, my late grandfather, God bless him, soul. My dad's now old. He's turning 70 this year. My man can fall asleep in the middle of anything, right? Just, just a quick, just a quick, just let him get like 30 to 45 seconds and he'll wake up sharper and ready to attack climate change. Like Joe, I know you guys, he's getting eviscerated probably online, but just let the man sleep in the middle of a fucking climate summit. Come on. The poor bastard. Isn't he like almost 80? I don't follow this shit. Dude, if I had to listen to that dude talking to, I'd be sleeping as well. I ain't even get mad. You gotta appreciate the team here, but being on it, they send over the aid to pretend like I have something to show you, aka Joe, wake the fuck up. The whole world is watching right now. You can't sleep in the middle of a climate summit. Joe, Jesus, what the hell are you doing, Joe? You're killing me, Joe? Pretend like I showed you something and stay the fuck awake. And he goes in for the clap and wipe the sleepies out of his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's funny. I think the main brainworms are people who really just use this as some sort of like political talking point, like liberal or Republican. It's just fucking, who gives a shit? He's just an old dude that fell asleep while someone was droning on about some nonsense. I know like everyone that's political cares so much. Oh, fucking world's ending because of climate, whatever. Like. Stop worrying so much about shit you can't control. Worry about yourself. Let Joe get a little bit of sleep at the climate conference, right? I don't know. Who cares? I don't care anymore. I'm apathetic. I made a long, I made a long Twitter thread actually this week about the Travis Scott Astro World incident and the eight people that died there. That's another brainworms thing. I don't want to get into this video because that's a lot to digest. But if you check out my Twitter dot com slash Leon Lush. I wrote a long Twitter thread about stuff like that and how we're ingesting all of these tragedies day in and day out and how it affects our ability to care and our apathy. Uh, maybe that's something that's interesting to you because I ha I've been thinking about that a lot lately in my own journey of self-awareness and how the internet and the consumption constantly of all of this bullshit affects my own life. I'm sure you guys might think of it in your own life and it's just good to be aware of it and have some food for thought and how we can, you know, mitigate or balance uh, what we consume. As always, I appreciate the hell you guys for being here. Uh, there is no shortage ever of brain worms in the world. And it's okay to hopefully laugh about it once in a while. 
as we get back uh, to the grind and worry about things that matter in our own lives. I appreciate you. We'll see you in the next video. If you could do me a favor before you go, stand up out of your chair and hip thrust that motherfucking like button for me. And we'll see you in the next video. Peace. <laughs> Thank you.